hello everyone uh, today we want to look at ela um writing and ela by itself so we look at the changes there so that we'll have this done and that y'all could um, understand what's going on this is miss celine Bedo. Yes. she is our sea english and creative writing teacher in the student hub all right so miss celine floor is yours great so guys the ELA paper and then the ELA writing paper, equally as important as mathematics, <laughs> right? So there have been some changes, right? Um, of course, there were no revisions to the time and order of the administration. So it remains at 50 minutes for the ELA writing paper. That is creative writing as we know it. We also have 75 minutes stay the same for your English language arts paper. Um, so we'll go through the writing paper first, creative writing that is. So this paper contains three items in any one year, either three narrative items or three expository items, right? However, we should know by now that the narrative writing style will be the writing style that is being assessed this year, 2021 so focus should be placed on that writing style students will be asked to respond to one item guys one item you're writing one essay please and it will be scored by two persons each response will be holistically scored based on the following criteria so they, they're marking you based on content language use grammar mechanics and organization so let's go through each of them content your content contains the elements of your story you have the setting, time and place, that's extremely, extremely important. You have the characters, those who are physically in the story, right? You describe them, you, they engage in actions and dialogue, very important. Never forget your dialogue, right? It helps give your characters personality. And then we have your plot. So your plot basically is your exposition. That is when you get into the body of your essay. So your exposition, you want to have your rise in action, then you have your climax, your falling action and your resolution. You must have those things to have a proper, proper plot. You don't want to have an essay all over the place and missing pieces. So you had a great climax, but your resolution wasn't really as good. We want to make sure everything is intact. And then we have language use. This is extremely important. Actually, all components are extremely important, but language use, it really helps to color your essay, as we would see. So that is your descriptive language, your figurative techniques, your sensory details. You want to use language that appeals to the reader, that paints a vivid picture of exactly what is happening in your essay. So language use is extremely important. Make sure that you have, like I said, descriptive details. We don't want, you know, in plain terms, we don't want a boring essay, right? We, we just don't want to have boring writing. It's creative writing so very important then we have grammar and mechanics this is this is something we need to pay attention to this is really your punctuation your capitalization your parts of speech and your spelling very very important you could have a really good story as in you have you know great content but if your syntax is off it if it is your Spelling is not so good. You did not punctuate where you should have, or you didn't punctuate at all. Um, you are going to lose marks, and all these things contribute to your final score. Then we have organization. Important as well. You don't want to have an essay that's all over the place, basically. So you want to make sure that your your plot is sequenced properly. You have clearly defined paragraphs to so you use your transitions to flow from one paragraph into another very smooth and you just want to have clearly defined paragraphs as well right so you don't want to have a paragraph with like 11 lines and then you have another paragraph with four lines so organization is very important so that is what each of the components entail like i said focus on the narrative style writing narrative descriptive i like to say narrative descriptive because within that you still need to be very descriptive um, so basically everything I just said and explained, it's here in point form, so you can go through it, but I went through it in great detail. Um, so let's move on to the ELA paper, right? Of course, we know that they test us on spelling, punctuation, capitalization, grammar, and reading comprehension, right? So 
nothing in terms of the tasks nothing changed it remains the same you are being tested on the same things that they would usually test you on so let's go through the which is usually task one spelling right in context um so for spelling they actually gave the spelling rules that they focus on within the paper so once you know these spelling rules and you learn them and then of course you learn the words you learn you know commonly misspelled words words that you find hard to spell um it would help right it would really help it's important to know that there were there were no revisions to this section so the number of items that they test you on it remains the same which is six right and the subtotal score remains the same as well 12 for this section they ask you to identify the incorrectly spelled word and then write the correct version right so it's important that you identify it you really need to identify it even if you you know you misspelled the word in the box your answer was misspelled as well if you identify the word that is spelled incorrectly you still get a mark because it's out of 12. So please ensure that you identify the word and then you write the correct version. Yeah, that's very important. Capitalization and punctuation. I really like this section actually, right? So of course you just have to use punctuation marks and capital letters correctly in writing. Oh, what I was supposed to tell you all is that the task to make sure and read your instructions. It's very important that you read the instructions. Usually they tell you that there's one incorrectly spelled word one error or one capitalization and punctuation error in the passage that they give you. Punctuation and capitalization. Use a colon and quotation marks to dialogue, titles, and direct speech. Very important. It comes all the time. Use the following punctuation marks in sentences. So you have your full stop, your question mark, your exclamation mark, apostrophe in contractions, right? And possessives, quotation marks, colons, and commas pretty straightforward section if you ask me like i said this is actually my favorite section so there were no revisions to this section as well the number of items remain the same six items the subtotal score of six so we're moving on to the grammar in context now use your parts of speech so use of parts of speech with correct verb terms and concord in writing so this section the problem section is very problematic it poses many challenges to many students but like they said you have to know your parts of speech to do this this section right so they test you on everything nouns adjectives pronouns adverbs prepositions even conjunctions your verbal forms so simple tense past tense future tense present continuous your regular and irregular verb forms verbs is this section this topic in particular verbs it's a lot but like i said once you know the rules you'll be fine um nouns your common your proper your collective and your abstract nouns they also test adjectives use of pronouns personal pronouns possessive pronouns reflexive pronouns and your relative pronouns so this is really just revision of your parts of speech once you have that down you'll be good to go that's the grammar section and of course there are no revisions to this section as well the number of items remain the same six and you score in a subtotal the subtotal score is out of 12 so that remain unchanged as well reading and comprehension very interesting i like this section as well so we have reading and comprehension there were changes to this section they cut down the amount of um questions that they're asking you so for fictional or non-fictional passages they will usually ask you 10 questions they give you 10 questions now you just have seven poetry usually 10 you have seven and graphic text usually five you now have four right so those were the changes really is just the amount and of course they identified what type of questions they'll be asking you for so for fictional non-fictional you have two literal questions then you have three inferential and then you have two where you have to evaluate and appreciate so it takes a little bit of reasoning and then the total is out of 13 same for poetry and then your graphic text you have one literal two inferentials and then one where you have to do your reasoning and it's out of eight right so the total will be 34 so yeah that's basically it reading and comprehension again it just takes a lot of practice but basically the same thing 
right it's it's a pattern so once you like i said once you do practice you'll be fine i'm actually kind of happy that they cut down the amount of questions that they ask yeah all right well i'll see you in some let me get that last spot um some people here from our class is this nazri good to see you seeing also uh, from trisha and from micah who's also from the class so if you're interested in joining the class you can always whatsapp this number to get started in our SCA english or maths preparation for exams this year so nice to have all of y'all thank you Mr. Lee, for running through the changes till we meet again love and blessings